Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markway at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marke of Living Streams International bringing you Matters of Faith with Graphic Online. Now this morning I'd like to capture my thoughts with, the, with words unreasonable expectations. That is expectations that are unreasonable. And I'm still taking my story from 1 Kings chapter 19, the story of that great man of God, Elijah, the one who prayed for fire to fall from heaven, the one who slew the prophets of Baal, all those miscreants in idolatry. He just wiped them away and then made sure that they don't even survive. I mean, that was a harsh thing to say. But reality, I mean, they were polluting Israel and bringing untold hardships in terms of famine and poverty to Israel by their acts, their fiendish acts they were getting involved in. And the Bible says Elijah was sent by God to bell the cat and to, to, to wreck those altars and to make sure that they never existed. Now, here's the interesting thing. Now, Elijah, after that great victory in 1 Kings chapter 19, the Bible says Ahab goes home. And when Ahab went home, Ahab rehearsed all the things that had happened, told his wife the cause of all this trouble, Jezebel, not a good name. Don't ever give your daughter the name Jezebel because it speaks of witchcraft and every negative satanic thing and even associated with idolatry. You don't want to give your name, your daughter's name Jezebel unless you're a satanist, I can tell. But the Bible says after Ahab rehearsing all these things, I mean, it drew fury from uh, Jezebel. She was infuriated. She was angry. She was, I mean, she went berserk and she was like, I'm going to deal with that person. And her response, she said, Lord, may God do so to me and more also. If I don't make Elijah said like one of those prophets, I'm going to wipe him out. Her response, her reaction was, I mean, something that, uh, and guess what? Elijah panicked. Elijah had that idea that everybody must celebrate his victory. Elijah had that, uh, that the impression that when fire falls, that's the end of the story. That's a period, full stop. You know, no, no nothing else. It's not a comma. It's a full stop to the story. And that was Elijah's expectations. Elijah's expectations was that, I mean, everybody must rejoice. The whole of Israel, listen, the whole of Israel said, God is God. The whole of Israel were brought into the revival. But there was one person who was not interested in it, who rather saw it as enemy activity and saw it um, to unleash a vicious, listen, campaign against Eli Elijah. And that was Jezebel. Are you aware that sometimes we expect everybody to celebrate our victory? We expect everybody to, ha to be happy that things have gone well for us. We expect everybody to clap. And it is an unreasonable expectation. Not everybody will be excited by your victory. Not everybody will be excited by your progress. Not everybody will be excited by your achievement. And as a result of that, you see, Elijah then went into despondency because of one woman's voice, and that is Jezebel. And as a result of that, you know, Elijah then goes into despondency. And that's why sometimes we get depressed when maybe plenty of people have clapped, but one person will make a silly statement concerning your victory lap. Or one person will bring out something that, that will just demoralize you and that will make you see the whole event as useless. One person will put a spoke, or will put a spanner in the wheel, will, will do something that will just destroy every, everything, destroy your confidence, destroy the victory song, change your victory song, and you'll be wondering, just one person. And sometimes we are taken aback by the best of those people. Those people could be loud, those people could be aggressive, you get it? and we are taken aback because we are expecting everybody to be happy at this time. You should be happy for me. Something good is happening to me. You should be happy to me for me. But no, it doesn't happen that way. And sometimes we work with that unreasonable expectation that everybody will clap for us. You'll be very, very surprised. I've been to places where I see everybody rejoicing, but somebody there very close to the whole court, you get it, saying something very, very negative and saying something, something very silly and pushing out something that can be very depressive. And you, the person who is doing the victory lap, if you listen to those voices, you're going to get despondent, you're going to get depressed, you're going to walk in discouragement, you're going to walk in despair. And that's what they do. 
So not everyone is going to be excited by your victory. Not everyone is going to celebrate your victory. Not everybody is going to applaud you. Not everybody is going to wave and palm fronts. Hey, even in the days of Jesus, you know, not everybody was saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Some people were displeased by the Hosannas. That's what life is like. It's part of the package. Some will clap. Some will scowl. Some will frown. Some will mock and, and scorn. But that's how life is. Not everyone. Are you aware that God even prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies? So enemy activity doesn't stop what God is doing. Concentrate on the greater noise. The noise, the applause of heaven, and the applause that good people around you are giving. And stop concentrating on the negatives other people are saying. Keep going on. Well, on reasonable expectations, the choice is always yours. See you later.